हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स टुडे लेक्चर इज अबाउट एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ यूपलो आई डी एंड दिस इज द पार्ट फोर लेक्चर ऑफ वेरिएशन इन क्रोमोजोम नंबर सो लेट एस रिवाइज वॉट वी हैव ऑलरेडी डन इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स ऑफ दिस टॉपिक सो वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड दैट हेट्रोप्लोइडी इज numerical changes in chromosomes and it is of two types euploidy and aneuploidy euploidy is when the numerical changes is such that it represents exact multiple of haploid chromosome number and in aneuploidy the chromosome number is not exact multiple of haploid chromosome number and aneuploidy is of two types hypoploidy where the chromosome numbers are less than the diploid counterparts and in hyperploidy the chromosome numbers are more than the diploid counterparts in euploidy we have discussed that uh, uh, many polyploids comes under euploidy and polyploids are those organisms which have more than two sets of chromosomes so this we have already discussed as uh, definition of euploidy and we have just discussed that in euploidy polyploidy will be discussed so we have uh, already discussed in previous lectures that there are various types of polyploidy and which are uh, categorized as autoploids alloploids autoalloploids and segmental polyploids in today's lecture we are going to discuss some examples of alloploids which have been developed naturally as well as by the treatment of um, the chemical colchicine so let us discuss first example of alloploidy first what is alloploidy it involves duplication of two or more genomes from different species and they are also called amphiploids many of our cultivated species are alloploids this we have already discussed that wheat belongs to um, hexaploid uh, wheat is a hexaploid species and this is uh, this evolved as a result of polyploidy so raphenobrassica we have already discussed this example in the third uh, lecture of variation in chromosome number but we we are discussing again here raphenobrassica is the first example of an alloploid which was reported by carapanchico and it is a allo tetraploid so if you see uh, how it was developed it was developed when uh, a cross was done between cabbage and radish and cabbage uh, the um, uh, this cross was made with a objective that the hybrid will be having head of cabbage and um, uh, roots of radish uh, so carapanchko uh, did this cross with this idea so when he got he did this hybridization so what he got um he got a hybrid but they were all uh, the he, the results were unexpected the results were opposite to what he expected instead of head of cabbage he got uh, head of leaves of uh, radish and roots of cabbage so although the result was not as per his expectation and the plants were all sterile but when uh, he observed some of the plants as fertile and when he um, observed the ploidy level of this plants he found that they were tetraploids so like here we can see that when a cross is done between raphena sativus and brassica oleracea both have 18 chromosomes so when the hybridization is done uh, a sterile hybrid is formed and when this sterile hybrid uh, is um, chromosome doubling took place um, uh, probably uh, uh, due to natural means and when this fertile hybrid was formed this was found to be a uh, tetraploid that is why here it is written as uh, fertile amphidiploid which means 2n plus 2n is equal to 18 plus 18 so this represents 2x um um, uh, um uh, 4x has 36 chromosomes and this is your raphenobrassica so raphenobrassica was as was first example of alloploid reported by carapanchko and uh, 
although this was not uh, the results were not as per his expectations but because this was fertile so this is how the crosses were done raphinus sativus has 18 chromosomes let us designate the genome by aa and brassica oleracea by bb so 18 chromosomes both have 18 chromosomes now in the sterile plant the a genome is coming from raphinus and the b genome is coming from brassica oleracea so it has nine um, uh, chromosomes from raphinus and nine from brassica 18 chromosomes but these 18 chromosomes will be in the form of univalence now doubling of chromosome took place uh, probably by natural means and later it was done by colchicine also so raphino brassica was uh, formed and raphino brassica was fertile because this was, was this was a tetraploid and it formed 18 bivalents now the second example we are discussing today in polyploidy uh, is of wheat and wheat uh, which we eat today is uh, belonging to hexaploid species and that is your triticum estivum so this is an example of hello hexaploid also segmental alloploid because the genome are related uh, from the species which uh, it, it has evolved the genomes are related so uh, triticum estivum has evolved from triticum monococcum agelops peltoides and agelops squarosa so how it, the evolution has taken place the first cross took place between triticum monococcum which had 14 chromosomes and let us designate this genome of this plant with aa and agelops speltoides agelops speltoides is a grass and let us designate uh, the uh, genome by bb so accidentally fertilization took place between triticum monococcum and agelops speltoides and a hybrid was formed so because both the uh, triticum monococcum and agelops speltoides have 14 chromosomes so the sterile um, this plant was sterile because they are belonging to different genome so although the plant was diploid it had 14 chromosomes but this was sterile because all the chromosomes they were present in univalent uh, condition now accidental doubling of chromosome took, took, took place in nature and it formed a tetraploid this tetraploid was a allo tetraploid and it had 14 chromosomes now oh no it had 28 chromosomes which are present in 14 bivalent form so this was fertile and this was later named as triticum durum or triticum dicocum so here you can see that this is how we designate a tetraploid this is your 2n is equal to 4x 28 aabb so aabb represents four set of chromosomes now when this um, tetraploid species of wheat accidental hybridization took place be between the tetraploid species of wheat and another plant of another uh, grass species that was Achillops squarosa. Now this had also 14 chromosomes and let us designate the genome as DD. So now you can see that when accidental took place, uh, when accidental hybridization took place between a tetraploid species and a diploid species, a triploid plant was obtained and this for with this had a B D genome and uh, from this it got 14 chromosomes and from agelops squarosa it got 17 so total were 21 chromosomes but these sterile they were all this plant was sterile because sterile the 21 chromosomes formed for 21 univalence now again accidental hybridization accidental doubling of chromosome took place and the chromosomes doubled so f f these three sets of chromosomes turned into six sets of chromosomes and the chromosome number doubled from 21 to 42 this was a fertile plant because it had 21 bivalents and uh, this or the ploidy level of this plant was hexaploid so later this was uh, named as triticum estivum and this is how the evolution of triticum estivum has taken place from agelops peltoides agelops squarosa and uh, triticum deorum E.S. McFadden, E.R. Sears and H. Kihara also produced artificial hexaploid wheat uh, and T. spelta by T. T spelta is your triticum spelta by crossing tetraploid MR wheat with diploid agelops toshi. So you can see here that's, that th this triticum dicoicoid is 
when cross fertilized with agelops torsi so this was a tetraploid species and this was a diploid species that triploid was formed and then triticum spelta was a hexaploid species uh, now triticale is another example and this is the first this is also called first man made cereal and artif this is an example of artificial polyploid or allo octaploid this triticale is a hybridization between triticum astivum and cicale cereal so here you can see that when hybridization took place between triticum astivum which is a hexaploid species and cicale cereal which is your rye so it had 14 chromosomes just uh, we have discussed that how triticum astivum was developed with 42 chromosomes when this uh, was hybridized with cicale cereal which had 14 chromosomes and let us designate the genome with rr so a sterile plant was formed because it, all the 28 chromosomes they were present in univalent form when this was doubled with the help of colchicine treatment triticale was formed and triticale was a ectaploid with these genomes uh, with uh, eight sets of chromosomes a a b b d d r r and this is t n is equal to 8 x is equal to 56 so triticale uh, was formed by thomas fair child uh, this is how the this is another uh, slide to show how hybridization took place between triticum durum which is another uh, tetraploid species of wheat cicale cereal and uh, then uh, this is how um, uh, 21 chromosomes were formed and then because 14 came from tetraploid and 7 came from uh, diploid species so 14 plus 7 becomes 21 and this is how hexaploid species of triticale has been formed so uh, triticale is present in the form of, was made in the form of octaploid species as well as hexaploid species and this these are this slide shows example where the hexaploid triticale and octaploid triticale has been formed so hexaploid has been formed by the fertilization between triticum durum and cicale cereal and triticum uh, when hybridization took place between triticum estivum and cicale cereal octaploid triticale was formed so triticale was the first man-made hybrid involving cross between wheat and rye followed by alloploidy by colchicine treatment this was developed by Thomas Fairchild. The desirable features of triticale are that it combines the yielding ability and grain qualities of wheat and hardiness of rye. Uh, it has economic and nutritional value of both wheat and rye. It makes butter, better, better bread than rye. It can be grown in sandy areas, better protein quality than wheat, but Indians do not prefer it because it is not as tasty as triticum estivum. So uh, Thomas Fairchild actually he wanted uh, to make a tasty uh, triticale which had hardiness like cicale cereal but the taste like triticum estivum. But uh, the hybrid was successful and it was a octoploid and tetraploid but um, it was it did not become popular because of the taste although it was hardy but it was not as tasty as triticum estima. So in this lecture we have discussed two examples Refano brassica and the evolution of wheat species and also we have discussed the third example triticale. So um, we will be discussing some more examples in the part 5 uh, video of uh, heteroploidy A or, or numerical changes in chromosomes. Thank you students.